What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another quick video for you. Today I'm going to show you how to clone yourself inside Vegas FX. Now Vegas FX is part of the Vegas Post package, so if you want to follow along this tutorial you have to have Vegas Post. But you can also actually follow along this tutorial pretty well with most other video editors that have a masking tool or feature, which almost all of them should at this point. But I'm going to be showing you what we're going to do inside Vegas FX. Just a heads up, this video is sponsored by Click Rising. So later on in the video, we're going to be talking about this. So without further ado, let's jump right into Vegas Effects. To start this off, you're going to be wanting to put your camera on a tripod so it's perfectly still and it's pointing at the spots you want your clones to be at. Now depending on how many clones you want, that's how many takes you're going to have to do. So I'm going to have three clones of my wife, so I'm going to do three different shots. Now it's wise to do a little bit of extra recording early and extra recording later so you can trim off excess stuff rather than not have enough footage. We're going to want to make sure we have a blank canvas on every single one of our shots. Go ahead and drag your clip into your bin and then let's drag it down to the timeline. Now from here I'm going to go ahead and rename it because we want to stay organized. I'm going to call this one Clone 1. Now navigate to the spot on Clone 1 where you want to start your video at and trim it there. Once you've done that, let's bring it all the way back to the beginning of the timeline. Then you're going to want to go through your shot and find the spots where your subject reaches out or their shadow reaches out the furthest from the position they're sitting or standing at. We want to take note of this because we're going to be trimming around this with our masking tool. And when you're ready, grab the pen tool and then start drawing a mask around your subject. You can follow curves and shadows of objects and maybe like the couch I'm doing right here, but you got to try to be as precise as possible for these. Next, play through your clip and verify that your subject never exits the mask or their shadow ever exits the mask that you drew. If they do, you may need to readjust your mask to compensate for that. Once you're done with that, you are done with your first clone. But before we go on, we gotta talk about Clio real fast. Clio is a money management app and it's AI based. So if you benefit from somebody telling you how to manage your money or just you needing that nudge to save this money now, you don't need to buy this now, Clio can help you out right there. It's free, it's for Android and iPhone, and if you really like it, you can use their subscription service, which gives you a ton of awesome stuff like overdraft protection. So check out the link below and then you can try out Clio for free. You know, right now, below, you go try it out. It's totally free. So then let's go ahead and drag the second clone's footage into the bin and then drag that onto the timeline underneath clone one. By doing this, clone two's background will fill in the background that you masked out from clone one. So go ahead and play through the clip and make sure it looks pretty normal to you. You can adjust it forward and back as needed. Now, depending on how well you did your first mask, you can make this effect really stand out because you'll notice that the second clone casts a shadow on the first clone's couch. So it really looks like she is in the room with herself. Now, if you want to go above and beyond and make a third clone or something even more, then you're going to have to do the masking again on the second clone. Now, depending on how your footage is shot, you may have to do a lot of work like this one right here. I have my wife sitting on the couch and then I'm going to have her third clone coming in behind her. So I need a mask around the top of the couch and then around her head perfectly. Now, I'm only going to be enabling this mask at a certain point. So the very beginning of the shot, it's going to be a wide open shot. And then at a certain keyframe, the mask is going to take effect. Then after a couple seconds, the mask is going to partially go away just to reduce the amount of keyframe I have to do around her head. Once I'm done drawing the mask, then I'm going to open the mask options at the left, then go down to transform and then put a keyframe on path. Then I'm going to go one frame back and then pull the mask outward to where it's not masking anything. Now if we play back our clip, you're going to see that there is no mask all the way to a certain point where her head stands still and then the mask enables. Now we're going to go forward in clone 2's timeline to where we know the third clone has already passed her head and then we're going to put a keyframe and then drag the mask outward again, but leaving the right side of clone 2 masked, which is going to be revealing clone 3. Here's what it looks like so far. We have our first clone sitting on the couch and then our second clone walks in. And then after our second clone sits down, after a brief second, you're going to see the mask enable, and that's when the third clone's going to walk by. So let's go ahead and drag the third clone's footage into the bin, and then drag that into the timeline under clone 2, so it's at the very bottom. Navigate to clone 2's keyframe where the mask starts, and then we're going to be dragging the third clone's footage around until you find the right spot where you want them to enter. Next, we're going to be doing some cleanup. If I zoom into my wife's head on clone two, you're going to see a little bit of the mask from the second clone's footage where it has like white of the wall and stuff like that. You can fix this by going over to mask and then going down to shape and then selecting the feather mode and changing it to in and then changing your feather strength. I found the two pixels is a really good number. And so once you're done with the feathering, zoom out and go ahead and play the whole thing again and see if it looks good to you. 
we see a good looking clone two and then clone three walks behind her and then she sits down and then all of our clones are in place looking at each other looking very confused. So here's what the final render looks like. And so that's gonna wrap it up. You now know how to clone yourself inside Vegas FX and just about any other video editor that has masking. It's fairly easy, but again, if you do some really tough shots, you're gonna have to do a lot of keyframing. But other than that, you are good to go. Thank you guys for watching. And if you want, maybe you could subscribe down there. You can do that right there. Or you could even shoot a like down there too, because you know, I'm trying to hit a billion subscribers and you can help me do that. So thanks again for watching guys. I'll see y'all in the next video. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my super patrons, HPL Gamers and LMC.